Uh, so we will see Studio. Studio is basically the user interface, uh, the, uh, the web user interface, which, uh, which basically controls the uh, entire platform. Uh, then uh, we will look at the uh, command line interface uh, that uh, we have for, uh, for uh, controlling, uh, controlling uh, platform, uh, together with uh, close uh, JIT integration. Uh, we'll look a bit into the mobile SDKs that uh, that uh, you can uh, yeah, you can uh, use uh, for good to develop applications, and uh, we'll we'll also I will show you at least uh, I'm not sure we will have time to, to do that, but uh, I will show you how to uh, how to build zero code apps. Basically, you can use drag and drop to to build uh, build a simple simple app really in in minute. You can have it deployed uh, deploy it in five minutes. I hope. Have you, have you, John? Have you ever tried to me uh, measure how much time it takes to to build a uh, form drag and drop? Depends on how quickly you can drag and drop. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm not good with mouse, so uh, it should be really few few minutes. So uh, then uh, I will show you backend integration, how you can basically integrate with uh, any any backend system in your. Uh, uh, either in uh, public internet or uh, behind the VPN, and we will look. We we won't look, but we will use. Uh, we will remotely use uh, Build Farm, uh, which is which is the thing which uh, which helps you to build uh, build your mobile applications for all the platforms uh, that uh, that mobile platform uh, supports, and. Uh, also, we will look a little bit at App Store, which is the thing which, for example, if you have a company or you have family and you want to, uh, you want to expose the applications for or your uh, family members or maybe mem uh, all, the, all the company employees, then you can use Enterprise App Store uh, to expose all the applications and I'll let them let them install. It. So uh, I will I will repeat uh, one, uh, once more. Uh, you have to have internet for this session. That's the most crucial thing here. So please, let's try that it works and the Wi-Fi has uh, enough uh, bandwidth to handle us all. And if it doesn't work, let's connect to my shared mobile workshop network. The password is, is uh, mobile, mobile rocks. That's good. Just try his hand if anything. So let me just go quickly to what uh, mobile platform is for uh, those of you who, who haven't uh, uh, been on John's session. So basically a mobile platform is something which sits usually between uh, the mobile apps, which is the cool part, and between the backend apps, which may be whatever you can think about. It can be something cool, but it can, it can also be some uh, old Java backend uh, application uh, written in Spring, uh, I don't know, Spring 2 uh, or something. Uh, no, I'm not joking. I, I, I like Java. So, uh, so this is your backend applications. And, uh, you are, you are uh, your apps are basically communicating through the Red Hat mobile platform to the backend, backend systems. Uh, it basically enables enables you to communicate with, with the backends, which uh, which usually have some uh, some APIs that uh, shouldn't be exposed publicly. So it means the secure way to to communicate to the uh, to the backend backend systems behind the VPN, for example. And uh, let's look closely what uh, the platform uh, has inside. I will I will use this nice tool. Uh, so at first. Mobile platform helps, helps you to build applications. So if you look into the uh, platform, you will see that there are, uh, there are templates that you can directly use uh, to scaffold application very fast. Or it even has uh, so-called forms apps, which are zero code or codeless apps, uh, that, uh, that you, can, uh, you can use drag and drop system to, or the drag and drop UI to build application and it will be automatically handled. Uh, these applications are usually very simple, like uh, they are just forms for, say, um, for maybe some uh, incidents on the road or, um, or I don't know, maybe floods are happening in your country, so, uh, so you need to build uh, some, some uh, applications very, very quickly. So you just use 
uh, coolness uh, but, uh, you can uh, scaffold it and deploy it to production in in uh, in our side. Uh, and uh, you can uh, you can uh, develop applications uh, uh, on the platform directly, or you can uh, you can uh, use your your laptop uh, to build it. Um, how, however, you, you you want. And the the platform basically goes in the in the bring your own tools uh, fashion. So uh, usually you can uh, use. Uh, all the frameworks that uh, that uh, you like, uh, all the uh, running uh, or powering uh, whatever uh, whatever uh, platform. Uh, for example, I have uh, native platforms here, and also some uh, hybrid uh, frameworks like Cordova, uh, Xamarin, and Apex Fighter. Whatever you want, you can use whatever editor you want. That's all. And then. Uh, Except the application uh, development, you, uh, the platform basically serves, uh, serves as deployment target. Uh, the deployment target is called MBUS, Mobile Backend as a Service. It provides some neat features like data synchronization, uh, storage, uh, security authentication, uh, management uh, of APIs. Um, basically, uh, it's built in a micro microservices uh, fashion. It's powered by Node.js. Uh, microservices, and uh, then uh, basically around the platform you have you have uh, we call it core, and uh, this core uh, basically serves as uh, something which helps you to develop and and uh, deploy these applications. Uh, it manages the life cycle of the uh, applications, so. Uh, you can have application in uh, development, in production, in test, in whatever stage uh, you can imagine in your in your uh, in your company. And of course, uh, this this application uh, platform can uh, can deploy uh, to either public cloud. Uh, it can be deployed to to uh, public cloud. Uh, it can uh, it can deploy to private cloud like OpenShift uh, Enterprise. Uh, or or hybrid clouds. It can even it can even uh, deploy into in itself uh, to something which is called uh, Dino Farm, and it runs in on uh, Linux containers, I believe. Good. So, quickly today. Uh, first, I would like to ask you what's your experience actually, so we can we can uh, start from. Uh, appropriate uh, level. Uh, is here anyone who have already built uh, some uh, application, some mobile application? Oh, it's like less than half of, of you. That's nice. That's nice. Uh, and uh, which of you actually built some native native SDK application? Yeah, it's like half of. You who, who build some some application and, and a hybrid. Oh, it's more more native, more native uh, uh, apps than than hybrids. Uh, who ever used uh, Node.js? Oh, ah, okay. Uh, it's, it's not chain, you know. <laughs> uh, and uh, have any one of you used Pete Henry before? Oh, nice. Just read it mobile people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit I expected that. But. So, uh, prerequisites for this, uh, for this workshop. Uh, at first, you have to have operating system. Uh, if you don't have, you can just follow. Uh, yeah, I can see there are people without laptops, so you can, uh, you can follow uh, and, and see. You can uh, reproduce it uh, at home. It's not re recorded, is it? It's not, it's not recorded, so it's uh, you have to have mobile. Uh, you have to have browser. You could have mobile browser, but uh, better will be uh, just desktop browser. Uh, optionally, if you want to actually run your application, you should have Android phone. Uh, could you raise a hand if you have Android phone and you plan to deploy it to it? Yeah, that's about half of us. Uh, and you have to have internet. Really, 
And if you have laptop, you have to have internet. <coughs> so, uh, first thing that we will have to do is actually registering for uh, an account uh, on OpenShift, so we uh, we will be uh, able to use it to log in into to log in into mobile platform. So let's go to uh, OpenShift.com and uh, register for for the account. Could you just raise a raise hand if you have already OpenShift account? Again, it's half of them. Uh, <coughs> it's like well, one third. So let's go to OpenShift.com and apply for for an account. I will uh, do that with you uh, simultaneously. Uh, I don't know. Let's ask uh, OpenShift guys. Uh, you can uh, you can check there whether uh, you want to receive spam or not. It's not called that way, but uh, you can figure. Um, mm -hmm. I'll make it a bit bigger. So if you have some problems with the registration, just let me know. For example, if you if you are a robot or spam bot. So you have to check the email then and, and click on the link that will come to the email. I just wasn't uh, logged into my email, so it takes time. should be uh, you should be locked uh, in the the open shift now huh? we're still working on a registration few of you I, I will leave one more one more second You also have to make sure that uh, you have uh, at least one free gear added uh, added uh, OpenShift. So uh, if you have already free applications there and you have just free account, mm -hmm. that, then uh, you need to delete at least one application. I hope don't delete production applications. <laughs> So uh, then I, I had uh, instructions on the on the uh, schedule of the conference 
that uh, we should have these installs. So if you, if you want to build the application or, or run it or control it locally, then uh, you have to have these, these things in installed. And I have, I have one error there. Uh, it's actually FH, FHC. So you have to have JIT, uh, Node.js, uh, 0.10, then uh, FH, FHC, and uh, whatever whatever text editor uh, you want, even even Notepad will do. I, I hope Emax users won't leave at this point. <laughs> okay, so next step uh, is anyone still in the process with registering? Uh, uh, if you have some problems, me. I have some backup <laughs> accounts, so uh, if you have problems registering, uh, just let me know and uh, I will give you backup accounts, we will be able to log in directly. Uh, otherwise, I will, I will continue. Uh, you have to register uh, or apply for invitation uh, to uh, Red Hat Mobile Platform on openchip.feedhenry.com. If you are curious what is FeedHenry, it is the name of the uh, project which <coughs> Red Hat Mobile used to be. Used to be. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, anyone need backup account for OpenShift? You want to tell me that I have created 10, 10 spare accounts and we, we won't use any of them. <laughs> you don't have to use any promotion code. And again, you will have to click a link in the email. What will uh, platform do, uh, it, will, it will create an application in your OpenShift to uh, uh, open shift to what account mm -hmm. Okay, I need to click invitation for the For the first time, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Do they all have proof? Yeah, they do. Okay. Well, you have to click. I, I made a mistake. Uh, you have to click the invitation in the email and then you can log in your OpenShift account with your OpenShift account credentials. Yeah, and it will ask you for a domain name, 
So please use some non-conflicting name. For example, DevConf is not probably a good choice. So if you finish, you should basically be in the, in the studio, in a platform studio. Is anyone who is already online? Uh, is there anyone who who doesn't have uh, who isn't logged into the into the studio yet? Okay. One or two? Let's wait a few seconds. Again, I can give you a spare account. So if you have any problems connecting. still in the registration process? <coughs> no? Perfect. Okay, so we should all be right here and what we will do mm -hmm. first is uh, we'll go, before I will explain uh, what's here, we'll actually go and uh, create a uh, great project and I will explain you in a bit why. So let's go to our project list and uh, click on a new project. And uh, Studio will basically offer you the, the list of templates that, uh, that uh, is installed in this, uh, in, in this uh, uh, deployment platform. And here you can choose from a lot of different kinds of, uh, of projects. So you can see there is a Hello World project uh, or uh, some push notification enabled uh, sample or template, then there are Cordova templates or native native SDKs, uh, Windows here, uh, here, here is App Accelerator, damn it, uh, Xamarin. Maybe I got a little bit lost. <coughs> uh, yeah, you have to go to openshift.feedhenry.com. Uh -huh. And uh, request an invite. Then uh, another mail will come, and you have to click on the registration. And there are also some Angular JS or uh, Angular Ionic slash Cordova. And it's my my favorite. That's why they are at the end. Uh, here we will use the welcome project template. So let's choose it and you you have to name it somehow. So for example, welcome to DevConf. It's the end of the first day but still welcome to DevConf. 
and then uh, hit create button. You're gonna rename the the um, apps that will be installed. So you can see uh, this uh, this will create four applications. Uh, the first one one will first one will be cloud app. Second one will be Cordova Lite type of application. Then a native Android and also native Windows. Don't please please don't use any iOS kind of app. On this openshift.feedandhurry.com we can we can uh, develop just or we can actually build uh, only Android apps. You can uh, you can write iOS apps but you won't be able to build them. So for this purpose use please just just welcome project. Okay, so let's create it. Um, Instructions. If you have a chance to to follow me, good. Okay. So at the end, you should have green bar. The cloud app has not been deployed yet. Oh, for sure. Uh, and that's why I wanted to start or create a project right at the beginning because since we are using uh, OpenShift uh, 2 deployment we will have to go and deploy it now because it will take a uh, uh, take few minutes to, to actually deploy to, to OpenShift 2. Um, so uh, who, has already, who, who already got the green bar? Nice. And who haven't? Cool. Anyone? You. But you will catch up. Uh, so here you can see what it has actually installed. So you can see if you go back to the project, you will now see your project listed. Welcome to DevConf. And uh, if you click on it, you will see what what uh, did it. Uh, created so it created three client apps, the mobile apps. Backup accounts. Yes. Yeah, sure. Could we use yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they are all called uh, defconf uh, dot some number at uh, fridge dot e eu. I will probably make it bigger, and I will give you. I have prepared them here on papers, so, so we don't actually apply. So it is a Defcon number and a fridge, F-R-Y-C dot E. Could, could, could you maybe have them, them help? Uh, do, do you still need, need help to, to catch up? No. Or, or okay. is everything fine. okay? Fine, fine. New project. Green bar. Okay. Project. 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 Yeah. Created. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. create welcome project. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, then you can click finish at the end. Finish. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, could, you, could you help him, Peter? Um, what is the password? Oh yeah, sure. That's written. That's not written anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the same as a as a Wi-Fi or wireless password. So mobile mobile rocks. So it installed three client apps. Uh, one Android, one hybrid at the at the top, and uh, one Windows, and also the cloud app. And it doesn't use any service. 
So what we will do now is clicking on the cloud app and go to uh, <coughs> deploy tab and just click deploy cloud app. You should see progress bar when it's uh, uploading. Where is that? Jason will just come. Left hand side deploy. Uh, deploy on a. Okay. In this uh, navigation. It, it takes a minute. It takes a couple of minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Deploying. Deploying. Yeah, it takes time. Go ahead, Jason. Can you manage? Yeah. Like for the first time, it is going to pass. Yeah, it has to create everything in your OpenShift online account, and it takes a few minutes. So if you if you parallel go to the to your OpenShift account, uh, it's it's optional step, but uh, <coughs> and you go to the console, then you will see deploy failed. Deploy failed. failed. Oh, it's oh, done. it failed for me as well. Uh, why? You can use the welcome project. The third one. Third one down, yeah. Click on the right bar. Yeah, and it's about, uh, give, it a, give it a name. Details. Uh, okay, I'm going to press that right. I'm going to try to fetch information from the nodes. OpenShift is down. Let's blame OpenShift. <laughs> oh. You don't have to rename those. I would say just try it again. We have, we have killed OpenShift. <laughs> yes! <laughs> right! Everyone go to the pub. <laughs> Yeah, you pay? Oh, that's a good no. Thing. It doesn't really matter. It's okay. So you just have to wait for the crux. Yeah, it's so, uh, deployed okay for me. So. Yeah, we're uh, yeah well, we have at least one success. So uh, let's try it again if it didn't work. Yeah. I think for uh, the, 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 the other other types of deployment, it is uh, it is uh, more stable. Yeah. So uh, if if you are on a platform, uh, for example, in your, in your company. Then uh, you can choose between different types of uh, the deployment targets uh, called called embossed targets. Uh, this one is OpenShift 2 target, uh, just because it's it's for free. Uh, but you can also have uh, the deployment target called uh, Feed Henry, which will which is basically um, built for uh, or optimized just for the uh, Red Hat mobile platform. And uh, you have OpenShift 3 uh, target that we haven't released yet. No. Uh, okay, so you will have it in uh, in the coming version. So if you run your OpenShift in, in the company, then you will be at deploy the apps directly uh, directly to, to OpenShift. We are seeing some errors in the actual OpenShift.com console as well, saying mm -hmm. that they're experiencing technical difficulties. Nice. So I recommend people to So I can install it on my own server. And just see. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. How fast is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's 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 log into to OpenShift.com and uh, see. For example, for me, the the app has already been created, and uh, but it's still. It will take a while, about six or seven minutes first time. Yeah. So if it fails, let's let's try it again. Just uh, we we want at the end to have uh, uh, everyone uh, the the cloud app running. And in the meantime, I will go to the studio. Um, in another tab. And uh, walk you through what what uh, you can find find in the studio. So uh, at first uh, you will see uh, uh, we have dived directly into projects. But if you if you are at home, you can click on getting started, and you will basically find the, the documentation uh, for how to how to get started with the with the platform.
on the uh, in the projects, you will see all the projects that uh, you, as a user uh, of platform, has access to. So you will see uh, uh, you can uh, if you have many applications in your in, for your domain, and then uh, you can uh, you can click on mine, and you will see just uh, just your application. You can you can search on or, or everything. Uh, you can basically have as many applications as, as you want here, as as long as the the open your OpenShift uh, subscription allows you to deploy it. Then uh, you can go to the to the reporting and analytics, and you will see uh, the the basic uh, analytics uh, here. Uh, you can you can go to the detail. However, we won't see anything yet since it is uh, pretty uh, pretty new new deployment. You can filter them by by location, they whatever. Then we have uh, we have a concept which is called uh, MBAS services. And uh, MBAS services, if you remember from a, from a previous screen, uh, is the third column. So uh, your client applications basically communicates uh, to cloud, uh, cloud apps running Node.js or powered by Node.js. And these cloud apps can, uh, can communicate with uh, MBAS services. Uh, if you install a new service just by clicking plus, Okay, so uh, we have to first provision the service, and we could probably do that now. It will it will take another geo. Two years. Though. Yeah. Yeah. So in or, in order to in order to use forms and uh, if you have enough geos, then uh, we can yeah. we can sure. deploy OpenShift yeah. and Bus service. Uh, which is basically the service which the zero code or codeless applications use uh, in the in the background. So I will I will use it. I'm not sure uh, if uh, we should we should do that to open chip guys. <laughs> oh, that's right. So open shift bus service. And these services are basically uh, integrations uh, with the third parties. Uh, you can see that there are services for uh, integration uh, to, to SharePoint, PayPal, uh, I, I don't know a lot of them, uh, SendGrid, Barker Reader, there is AeroGear push, push notifications. So uh, I will skip it for now. Uh, we will do that if we have time. But uh, if we if we dive uh, if we dive into what we have actually created, uh, I have went to the first of the applications. You can see that uh, we have navigation, uh, which uh, which helps helps you to navigate through uh, quickly. So uh, here you navigate between projects, and uh, you can navigate between uh, applications. So uh, let's go to the uh, welcome project client application, and you can see that it is directly uh, it is it is previewed in the in the window, so you can see what you will be uh, you will be running at the end. Oh. Making the font bigger doesn't help you. Oh yeah. And you can choose. Nice. Yeah. Or you can you can even open the application here in another window. In the drop down. If we 
Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, once again, so you can just look down and okay. go into the So this is a this is a preview of your cloud app, and it's connecting to the project that you've deployed in the project. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So you have three different types of. Uh, you can. Uh, uh, I'm just doing a bo 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 through the through the studio, so, so you can see what you can you can, is, you can uh, use. Uh, we will uh, once uh, everyone here has, has uh, deployed, and uh, then we will do uh, other stuff with our applications. Yep. And recompile. Yeah. So if you want, you can go to the. Some, uh, when you, if you remember creating websites from the in Microsoft uh, <laughs> Office, you know. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we should have a green bar like at the end, end of deployment. Disaster. Yeah. Uh, so again, uh, if you go to projects, uh, you select project and go to the client app, then uh, you see the preview of the application. <laughs> And uh, you can preview in uh, full browser because it's just uh, application which uses web, web standards and APIs. And you can verify that you can call the cloud. And it should it should tell you that uh, you should you should get a response. Uh, so uh, what else we have in the uh, in a uh, client? App? You can see that there is a documentation. This documentation is basically uh, it generates the markdown uh, markdown markdown file, which is uh, uh, in your in your project. So if you click uh, next on the editor and uh, open uh, readme readme md, there is none. Yeah, it's, it's opening. Uh, there is a markdown which uh, which it basically pre-generates to the uh, to this documentation. So it's nice for for uh, developers. Uh, you can have there even the API API blueprint. There are the analytics again, uh, which are which are uh, displayed uh, for the for this app specifically. There's a configuration for different uh, targets for different uh, platforms. There is a push integration, if you like. You can uh, you have to enable it first. But uh, what we will do now, or uh, could you could you uh, raise your hand if uh, you have already finished deployment? Uh, sorry, uh, again the other way around, who haven't finished deployment yet. Three, five, seven, approximately. So let's, let's wait a bit. Okay, so uh, Let's go back again, and uh, you can uh, go to the cloud app as well, and uh, you will see that the structure is similar. Uh, uh, there is the cloud app, and uh, it says that it's running. You have documentation. You have the inline editor, where where you can you can of course uh, edit it right right in the cloud, or you can use uh, you can use uh, it locally. I will show you in a few minutes. You can configure the application with some environment uh, variables. You can uh, see what data are uh, yeah, stored uh, using using the uh, platform APIs. Some statistics, statistics, logs from the application. <clears throat> and uh, what is important, uh, what is as well important, is uh, that uh, you are basically you can run this application in several stages, as as I already uh, told you. So uh, you can uh, you can switch here between between development and, and production, but uh, we haven't uh, deployed to production yet. So we will be using the the development target uh, environment. Uh, I'm not sure if we can uh, create more environments in this instance, but uh, yeah, in your deployment, in your platform deployment, you can definitely define a as many as many stages as you want. So if your Development cycle uh, basically takes uh, some user acceptance testing or 
uh, I don't know, uh, some weird, uh, weird testing stage, uh, then you can, you can uh, do that. Uh, I would probably add at least staging, uh, staging here. On the uh, another axis, you can. Uh, I don't know what connections are are about. Would you tell anything else about about it? About uh, studio? Uh, about the cloud yeah. portion specifically? Yeah. Uh, no, I think you've covered most areas of the. Well, what we need to know now. So, uh, is here still anyone who haven't uh, who haven't deployed yet? Do you free? Uh, do you want some help? Well, I'm just waiting. Waiting, still waiting. Deploying. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's wait for. A, for so a sorry, anyone who's still waiting, you still have a blue bar. It has yeah. to run red. If if the bar is on red, it means the deploy has failed. You want to try it again. So what else could we show here? Uh, we could... Yeah, I'm waiting for everyone to, to have it, or we don't have to have it, everyone. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go and build it. If you have Android phone and you want to build the app, uh, we will use another, another uh, neat feature, and uh, it's a build farm. Uh, the build farm is used by a by, uh, platform underneath, uh, however, uh, we will use it direct, uh, we will use it uh, remotely. So let's enter the uh, some of the client apps. I will use, uh, no, yeah, let's use the, the Cordova Lite app, uh, the, the welcome project uh, client, and uh, hit, uh, go to the build, build uh, app, and hit uh, Android. And finally hit build. Which which version of Android is? It's four. Marshmallow. Uh, actually, I I don't know. It's a uh, Cordova Light. Uh, yeah. So I, I might be worth talking about that for just a minute. Yeah. Um, so typically, with, with mobile development, you have native or you have hybrid. So native is your typical, your Android, your iOS. You're using Xcode or the the Android build tools directly. For hybrid development, there's a solution called Cordova. It's an Apache project. Uh, with Cordova, um, typically if you're doing Cordova development locally, uh, you install the Cordova tools and you use them to create a new project and you add whatever version of whatever operating system you want to mobile operating systems. The concept we're working with here is something called Cordova Lite. And it's something that was built into the Red App mobile platform it's specifically designed for people who had web development experience but weren't familiar with mobile development, weren't familiar with a hybrid or native. Um, and it abstracts away all of the Cordova stuff and exposes just the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So when you go to build a Cordova Lite application, the system decides for you based on what's configured um, which version of Android or iOS is going to be used. At the moment for the Cordova Lite applications, it is Android 4.4, 4, I think. So yep. it's all um, yep. In about two or three months, we'll have an update coming out that brings the version for Cordova Lite right up to 5. Was it 1? Uh, up to Marshmallow. Yeah. Um, if you're using a Cordova application, a full Cordova application, you get to decide as you're adding the platforms what version of the SDKs you're using. And similarly with the native ones in the configuration of properties files, you get to choose what version uh, of the operating system you want to charge. So uh, if it built uh, successfully, you will get a QR code which uh, you can actually scan with uh, uh, with your mobile phone. Uh, did you, anyone already got the, uh, the QR code? Yeah. Nice. 
Okay, so let's scan the QR codes. No, uh, about the permissions, are they also generated automatically? Because I see there's uh, quite a lot of permissions. Yeah, there's here. a lot of permissions. So <laughs> if we can close the QR code for that. So again, for full Cordova apps or for native applications, you'd use the standard uh, system way of doing it. For Cordova Lite in the config section, if you can mm -hmm. go to the config section, um, and go to Android, it has the list of permissions that it's requesting here. You can untick the ones you want. Um, we, we've had quite a few discussions about whether we should start with them all ticked or all not ticked. Um, and there's pros and cons to both. If you start with them all not ticked, and someone does a build, most of the functionality, the device integration functionality doesn't work. But if you start with them all ticked, when you go to install the app, you see this big long list of permissions. So yeah. with, with Marshmallow, I think it yeah. won't be. Exactly. Yeah, it, it won't be the, the applications request permissions yeah, but, as they need them rather than asking for them all up front. Yeah. So if you are not, uh, if, if you don't follow the the Android uh, developments with uh, Marshmallow update, uh, the Android will basically follow what what Apple does, and uh, you will be every time asked uh, for the permission which it needs. Uh, ad hoc, so uh, you won't get this uh, long list of uh, of permissions yeah. which you probably get. And for uh, backwards compatibility, it will be still necessary. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, for this, I believe you need just location. So if you want to update it and build it again. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it was. <laughs> so you can again connect uh, your mobile phones to this uh, to this network if you if you want. Um, so who have the app already running? All of unknown sources. And uh, is there anyone who is still trying? Yeah, perfect. So we'll let let's finish it. Let's let's install it first, so we can click around. Is there a way to cancel a build? I got the message that something is wrong, but nevertheless, it's still running. It's it's in it's in cloud. You don't care. It's it's Karen, uh, the US uh, as a the DevOps. <laughs> he cares how many. I care. He's he's counting uh, every every bill. Every but. Does, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Protože se, se prostě plánu, jak se budeme migrovat na IPv6, tak ty nody BTSky a v Americe. To by byl okrajový projekt. A já bych vám řekl, že to je to, co si pole skriptoval a že to je to, co 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 to, Jsme ještě autotíku, se co zvykal za mě, který jsem ještě nevěděl. Yeah, so if you if you have it installed, you can basically click, click around and, uh, for example, invoke the invoke the Node.js application on the on the back end. You will get a uh, get a response. I will I will rather show it on a, on a screen. Thank you. So let's. Uh, I have, I have it here. Okay. So let me use. Yes, I have the book. I have the book. I have the book. I Když je kde prostě ta lednost, ta správná, ten správný druh investí si kurva líbí, nebo ty píká. Co myslíš, že já, ale si nechám bych kvůli. Sure, uh, OK. At, at this point, we should look into, into the code, uh, how it actually did it. Uh, so, uh, let's go back to the studio. Uh, is there anyone who is still trying to deploy it or build a binary? Already for one. Uh, do you need some help? No? That's fine. It's still building, just. Okay. You can, you can as well open the another browser window and just, uh, just go around the source a bit. Uh, with me. So let's look at uh, how it was uh, it was built. Let's look at the cloud application first. So obviously uh, it's a Node.js application. A few, few of you have claimed to uh, to use Node.js already. So uh, it's a pretty normal Node.js uh, Node.js uh, application. With uh, package JSON and uh, the, the dependencies, it uses uh, it uses Express uh, framework. Uh, there is the Feed Henry Feed Henry Embus API, which is the only required dependency here. Uh, it basically exposes all the all the platform uh, functions uh, like uh, data synchronizations, uh, data synchronization, uh, caching. Uh, database. Um, just a one uh, shame, shameless plug. Uh, I will have no JS uh, presentation tomorrow uh, <laughs> as last talk at, at Saturday. So uh, if you want to know more about no JS, let's let's come there. So this package package JSON. Uh, here is the application. The package JSON uh, needs to needs to have it as main entry point in application. Uh, you can see that we are using Express. Uh, we have several uh, several standard uh, platform uh, uh, services or um, how it's called uh, middleware here. Uh, we have uh, Embus Express. Uh, which, for example, uh, it exposes a uh, health, health, health check endpoint. So uh, we basically know when the when the application is up, up and running, or the platform knows that. Embus is for running Embus services. Yeah. So sync and APIs are powered new stuff. The rates and the stuff. And then uh, our own route uh, goes here. Uh, you can see that uh, that uh, we are uh, 
we are including this uh, Cloud.js or requiring this Cloud.js. And if you click on hello, you have actually um, you have actually run uh, through this uh, this uh, route. You can see that uh, we are recording some activity. Uh, enlarge the font. I will try that. I hope it will react. Cool. So uh, basically, what we do here is uh, we create a Express router, which is basically a bundle of routes which we can mount on the application layer here. So all the Express application, you can either create create routes directly here, or for a better structure, you uh, usually use usually use pattern when you have a module which have uh, certain uh, uh, routes like hello and in application js uh, on the on the in the root of the application uh, you you use uh, the root as uh, as a middleware so you require it and it will basically mount all the applications whatever you want so uh, you can use for example api so it will be api slash hello and so on uh, yes, it's all public, uh, but it uh, it can be authenticated, right? Yeah. It's up to the yeah. the open question. Uh, this one, uh, this one is uh, exposed, or all the embassies are in general exposed uh, to public internet. Uh, you could run the you could run uh, the platform uh, in intranet. Uh, on some private network, but it uh, usually doesn't make sense because you would have to use your mobile uh, phones just in the in the VPN or so. So uh, usually, usually the apps uh, in a platform are built f for a purpose of exposing some private APIs in a in a public way. So this platform usually talks to some private uh, private endpoints and uh, exposes some information. Node.js is the uh, Node.js is perfect for this purpose because it's very fast uh, for, uh, for development and it also scale, uh, scales uh, very nice. So for this purpose I, I would say that uh, Node.js and JavaScript is, is perfect because you can write some, applica uh, some API wrappers very, very quickly. Is that a course uh, plugin necessary? Uh, course is not maybe used there. Yeah, uh, course is just standard uh, course protection. Uh, it will use. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how, how does it do the uh, do do the protection, but it's basically for it verifies uh, the post request has the cross cross origin stuff. So cross origin. Uh, we cross use it because in this example for the preview for it's going to be on a different domain. I think it's okay. actually necessary because the bus platform reroutes the request, so you have to have it. Uh, yeah, so if you don't have it, it's not going to work. Yeah, as well as that, they're going to be out there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. Uh, except that you can see that we are also. Uh, we are also serving uh, serving uh, static resources for public app. So if you would go to the root of the application, which you can find here in our detail. Uh, let's don't save it. Uh, you can uh, you can see here in a in a details tab uh, the current current host where it is deployed. You can open it and you will see that uh, it will open you index HTML which you will find here in the public. So uh, what do what we could do, let's do some uh, some modifications in the uh, in this code. So, for example, I will put here and save it. Uh, then go to Cloud.js and let's do some modifications like hello from Red Hat Mobile Application Platform on uh, running next one. And uh, in order to see some activity in the log, we will also put some log. Uh, most simple way will be just putting console log there. Let's uh, uh, 
use some uh, best practices for logging and uh, now I have to go to deploy again and and deploy it you could also uh, enable auto deploy which will mean it will it will uh, auto deploy the application on each save in the in the editor and also on each uh, because it uh, the editor uses the uh, Git repository underneath so uh, every time you save something it will basically uh, redeploy redeploy the application how fast is that compared with the first deploying? Uh, it should be quite a bit now it should be yeah. a little bit faster yeah. but maybe a minute or two it's not creating the application but I know that OpenShift 2 basically re mm, reruns all it's it basically restarts the application you stop the cartridges and yeah, stuff yeah. And then, uh, the code and stuff the, there is uh, nothing like a live reload or something like that, which would be in a, in a second. So if, if you want to develop really fast, you should probably take uh, the application development uh, locally. Yeah. Uh, for having the workflows, for example, in Cordova, uh, you can have uh, live reload. You can see the, the changes in the application instantly. There are also the workflows where you can have your application running in the mobile app and uh, live reload uh, to the to the mobile mobile phone but uh, uh, that's not the purpose of the editor in the in the platform uh, usually the editor is just uh, for demos presentations and uh, if you want to see something uh, you want to uh, you need to access the code directly uh, then, then it's uh, uh, it's uh, good to, to have it here so uh, this is a cloud app. Uh, I will make it small. Any, any questions to to cloud app? And uh, let's go and uh, look at the at the client app as well. So we have a we have a preview here, and go to the editor, and you can see that. Uh, there's a pretty pretty simple pretty simple HTML application. You have uh, again package package JSON uh, where you uh, it doesn't have any dependencies because uh, everything we use is just for for development. So basically, we depend on a Grunt builder here uh, and uh, Grunt. Uh, in ground file, the, the build of this application is uh, is uh, defined. You have, but in a, a www, uh, it's a standard structure for uh, Cordova applications. So www is basically what what will be exposed uh, to uh, to um, clients. So you can see it's a standard. Wait. Uh, let's put this more. Can I close it? Okay. I think so. Can I hide the preview. Hide the preview? How? Yeah. Open, preview. Open the right now. Really? Right now. Oh, yeah. Nice. Let's see that. Uh, perfect. Uh, so it's it's basic HTML application. Uh, it's actually running uh, on a backbone backbone JS. And it has uh, it has the JavaScript sources here in the JS uh, JS uh, app. Uh, here are views defined. Here is the initialization, and so on. Here are model models for the for the page routers. Yeah. So uh, I won't I won't dive into it. You could basically deploy there any any HTML you want. We could just replace it with this HTML5 with hello, and it will it will do do it. It won't be anything nice, but uh, it will uh, it will work. Uh, there are for Cordova specifically for this uh, hybrid development. Uh, there are frameworks which uh, specifically targets uh, development for which where applications look almost like uh, they are uh, native applications. Uh, and uh, if uh, if you would like to use one of these uh, apps, 
then you could create uh, ionic ionic hello world client, and uh, uh, it basically it runs on Angular JS, and uh, the framework is optimized for for use on on uh, mobile phones. Good. So now we should probably look at the client. Uh, command line, uh, command line interface. For that, we will have to have few few things installed. Yeah. Now we could also check the backend activity, but it didn't work this morning. So uh, maybe you will tell me, uh, tell me why. Maybe we will figure. Yeah. Again. Very nice. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, I need to I need to show it first. So let's go here to the application again. Uh, we could we could show also uh, data browser. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, in data browser, uh, it's a feature which allows you. Uh, there is an API uh, for database calls. I will show it in a uh, in a bit. And uh, there's a fh.db API, and it allows you to save uh, save the um, records into the MongoDB uh, database underneath. So uh, when I hit save, we can go we can go to the cloud app with the data browser, and there should be. There should be one record there. So let's try it again. Hmm. Do you know why it didn't work? Uh, Maybe just uh, poorly, poorly written. So reload it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, I ha I haven't shown you <laughs> when we call the well we, when we call the cloud again we will get the up updated application and we can also go to the to the cloud app again and uh, look into logs. And we should see the console lock. Here we go. So, mm. doesn't matter. <laughs> cool. So uh, you can see that you can you can even develop this app in the uh, in the uh, studio, but it, it's not anything critical. Uh, critical. Uh, anything useful, straightforward, or anything. You can you can watch you can watch the locks here. How how they are uh, how they are running. Uh, so uh, that's nothing practical. So that's why we should we should uh, use uh, command line tools or uh, develop uh, the app uh, locally and uh, use uh, uh, use a platform as a deployment target. So uh, who has already the FHC uh, command line interface installed? Cool, like few of you. So who haven't and uh, will will be following? Same, same item, some same number. So do you at least have uh, Node uh, JS version zero ten installed? Uh, who who doesn't have uh, Node in, in this version installed yet? It doesn't have to be uh, for uh, forty one, but uh, it should be a zero dot ten. So. Uh, if you if you don't have it, I think uh, it doesn't make sense to uh, to follow, uh, or you could download uh, Node.js, uh, but uh, but it will take uh, take some time, I guess. Hmm? It's few kilobytes. Distribution. Okay, let's download uh, from archive somewhere. I'll download. Uh, 
Yeah, so it's uh, you can find it on Node.js org slash dist, and then you can click to the to the version and install the uh, the version for your for your platform. However, uh, if you have Node but you don't have uh, command line tools installed yet, uh, let's uh, type just f uh, in npm install fh dash fhwc uh, dash g which will install the package uh, globally so now we should have fhc 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 installed yeah. good so for command line interface, uh, the, the first thing uh, you have to do when uh, you install it is basically target some uh, some uh, platform, some domain on the on the platform. Basically, take the URL of your deployment and put it here. So FHC target. Your domain domain name dot open dot dot com, and uh, once it uh, successfully ends, then you can do FHC login and put username and password. Will it ask for a password? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So uh, it's uh, similar to OpenShift command line tools. Uh, so uh, you can expect similar operations, uh, uh, like uh, you can see the projects. Nicely formatted, but uh, you can see right. good, or you can see all your apps, FHC apps, uh, and provide the project ID. Is there anyone who is still uh, downloading Node.js or trying to install the command line tools? Oh, few of you. Oh, I, I will wait. Uh, do you need some help? No, no. Okay, let's let's wait wait a few minutes. So you you are still downloading or downloading uh, dependencies? Uh, npm install. The data browser communicates through yeah, the uh, through API. I don't know which, which API it, it, it API uses. Yeah, is I, I, is I it secured so. in some way? Or yeah. if, if the application ID is exposed? No, it's secured with a, an API key. <coughs> <coughs> so, um, in, can you flip back to the security for a second? Um, so, click into the picture of the person, the settings and API key management. Mm -hmm. So there's a user API key automatically created when your account is created. And it's that user API key that is sent with the requests to get the data. So you have to have a valid account and a valid API key in order to be able to get the data back to the if, if the API key is stored in a fake application, for example, Sorry? Then, uh, if uh, somebody else makes an application but stores this API key, can can he also access this way? The well, if if someone gets your API, yeah. yes, it's, but it's the stored same inside as, the application. No, no, this is a user API key. There is a separate set of API keys for the applications. Oh. Um, 
the user API key is it basically it's, it's an alternative authentication mechanism to a cookie. So you kind of you should treat it as securely. Um, that user API key is never put in any applications. So um, you, you can definitely secure it, but this yeah. application, this one, is not uh, mm -hmm. secured by by default. Uh, is it uh, is it simple to yeah, yeah. secure it? No, they. they the APIs for the dead browser are secured yeah, the, with, with the user API. Sure, sure. Yeah. Have you meant uh, not the data browser, but the uh, FHDB, like the uh, cloud? I, I meant just the, the example there, the, the data browser you could like. Yeah, I think it, it, it may use actually different API uh, accessing it than the, than the client app finally uses. Oh, okay. yeah? So uh, the client app has different different API key than, than the studio. Yes, yes. So, uh, uh, any other questions while we are waiting to, to finish finish installation? Uh, is still anyone installing it? Yeah. Um. So uh, what we could show in the meantime? Yeah, I install it on Docker. I've installed an image with Node. Uh, I'm just installing the dependency. What version of Node? I have to check the image. It's the latest. Right, because um, they, they platform, they, they version of the user is using the 0.10. Okay. Or the latest version of Node is 4.2. The, the new community went through a little bit, but not even last year. Okay. And they have been going 0 0.506, and they got to 0 0.12. And they said, yeah. so this yeah. thing has been out for years. It's production sure. rate. Well, we could trade the APIs. Well, the APIs, for example. And then they went about two months later. So well, while we are, we are waiting, we could look into uh, what the. It seems like a big, big jump. Who the application uses uh, underneath. So uh, we have seen the Cloud.js. Uh, Cloud.js. If you if you have seen if you have seen uh, this screen uh, in the in the mobile application, uh, you will get it uh, location and you can request the weather info. So it basically uses the get weather uh, endpoint. Now it uh, it uses uh, API activity activity dot record. So let's see what's activity. And activity is using uh, MBAS API to save the data to to cache. This this MBAS API uh, has several uh, has several methods. Uh, one of them is uh, cache. Uh, cache basically allow you to uh, store values into into Redis cache. And I believe these records are not stored uh, anywhere or exposed anywhere, right? Yeah, my if you scroll down a little bit further, there's uh, some DB calls that are around. Oh, it's in the cloud. Yeah. Or. Is there, is there any, any other um, use of the API, HMBOS API? Uh, should we just secure FH dot? Yeah, we could. We, we, the main cloud APIs are cache DB and sync. Cache DB and sync DB. So DB sync is not here, I think. I don't think there's sync in this. So, but basically, the, this way you have exposed other API like uh, data synchronization, FHDB, which stores data to MongoDB, you have Redis there. So, uh, you can. Mm, the the or basically the client application can either communicate with Cloud App, which stores data in in MongoDB or Redis, or uh, it has a special store for, for synchronization, which uh, saves data on MongoDB. Uh, yes. it, MongoDB different by default, but it could be and it could be backend system. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the the weather the the weather. 
uh, sample basically uh, allows you to uh, it's a sample of usage uh, of uh, the um, of the uh, calling uh, coded calling some some third party API or your API on on a backend uh, backend server. So here, uh, let's imagine that we are not uh, calling uh, boardbetteronline.com, uh, but we are we are calling some some backend uh, backend system behind a VPN. For example, some airline could uh, could expose uh, the API for for flight uh, availability, and then you could uh, build an app which which has cloud app, which basically filters what can be what can be uh, exposed to the to the uh, client uh, client apps to the to the mobile mobile devices. So the, this better sample basically serves as a sample of this uh, this uh, usage. Is still uh, someone trying to trying to install it? Yeah. Yeah. So with FHC, uh, you can see uh, that you can list projects. Uh, it will basically give you the ID you need. Projects. You can install auto complete uh, auto completion if you want. So uh, FH apps, uh, and you will give it the project ID. And here you can see that uh, there are uh, Git repositories that you use to to exit uh, to to access the the app. So let's let's clone it locally. Uh, the first first thing you you need to do to uh, to clone it is installing the your public SSH key. That if you followed the instructions from the uh, from the session info, then uh, yeah, you already have it. Uh, is there someone who doesn't have doesn't have the key yet? SSH public key and of course private key. Uh, cool. So we are all set up for Git checkout. Uh, let's uh, let's take your key and we will install it to our user settings. So you have to you have to click on the profile uh, profile icon uh, settings. Uh, SSH key management and here you basically add a new key oh. I don't remember which one I, I, I do New public key for that. Do you know the command? Yeah, the private. Okay. You know, I, I will probably just remove it from the other host. So I was testing OpenShift integration today in the morning. And of course I have used Tell me that now it should work. Yeah. Nice. Is it, uh, There's only one Git server for the cluster. For or one host yeah. for the cluster. So you could uh, have one user using more domains. Uh, could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Device, so. That makes sense. Okay. 
so now if if you have uh, put the SSH key there, you can you have of course access to all these uh, Git, uh, Git repositories. So let's cloud uh, let's check out the cloud app uh, with uh, Git clone. Just copy the URL which was given uh, given here in the list of the apps. Uh, it's a git repository on a, on a master so uh, what I could do here or what I need to do here is uh, install all dependencies with npm install now it will download half of the internet it's, it's not that bad be in under a minute. I just hit. Uh, I, I just uh, npm install it. So it's a basic workflow for uh, for Node applications. It basically installs uh, npm install installs all defined dependencies for that app. Uh, so it now uh, the downloads them and it populates uh, the node modules uh, directory in the project. So it's directly from Git on your laptop? It, no, no, no. It, I have cloned the app and then npm install uh, downloads uh, downloads packages, the node packages from npmjs.com uh, repository, mm -hmm. which is the standard uh, standard node npmjs. Sorry, dot, dot com. Uh, which is the central node package repository, uh, and you can basically in the in the cloud app you can you can use whatever package uh, you want from from this repository. So say say we want something for SSH key management, we could probably find here something. Yeah, I'm installing that app. I have cloned that app locally, and I'm installing it. Uh, I'm installing it here, so I, I will be able to run it, run it locally. Yeah, npm install. So what I did, uh, I will. I won't cancel it now, but uh, uh, when I'm in the project, cloned locally. It's standard uh, Git repo repository. Uh, so here is uh, package uh, package JSON, which contains the list of the dependencies as you see see them in the in the editor before. So it's a, it, it's that Express app with uh, Embass API, and if you run npm install, it will basically download everything which is in uh, package JSON. Uh, if you are not that familiar with Node, I, I really encourage you to come tomorrow to my uh, Node.js presentation and I will tell you about, about all these uh, workflows. Mm -hmm. oh, it's still downloading. It's, it's also compiling the native, uh, native uh, extensions. So once installed, you can actually run the application locally. So uh, let's modify it. Uh, what could I modify? Let's modify this message at start. Uh, so in application JS, which one will be the the for the one? Yeah, it's, it's a test. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so console app uh, started at. Okay, so now you can see that I have changed it, so I can push it. I can basically develop it uh, locally as as I as I have to uh, change. Just put some meaningful message there. Uh, I don't have. Oh shit. That's fine. So I will just push it into the cloud. And once it's pushed. Uh, I will see it here again. If I have uh, auto deploy enabled, it will automatically redeploy. But in this case, I will have to. Uh, I can access it in the in, in the editor. Say, 
and uh, now you can see that there are my local changes and I can go to deploy and deploy it and it will basically perform it will, it will perform the update uh, and uh, deploy uh, deploy a new new version to open chip. And at the end, we will be able to see that uh, in, in uh, logs. So you can do the same with the with the client apps, right? If uh, you want to run, if you want to run the client app locally, you just clone uh, FHC apps. You just find the URL of the client project, and I clone it. Uh, when are we supposed to end by the uh, half? Yeah. And again, it's a it's a node node based application, so I will have to run a npm install here. And it has already uh, completed a deploy. So if we go to logs again, you will see I've started for dev configure. So usually the workflow is that you are really changing the sources locally. You do develop it as as you need, and then you then you push it to the cloud. You can have auto deploy. Uh, if you are the only only user uh, of that or only developer of that of that app, then uh, then uh, that's probably good to have uh, auto deploy and and see see the changes constantly. And once installed, we can do grunt. Uh, uh, we will need, uh, in order to, to run the compile process for this uh, client application, we will have to have grunt CLI installed, which is another, uh, which is another global package. You, you don't have to uh, follow, follow this. So now you can see that I have the application here, somewhere open it. Let me just find the current window. Yeah, so uh, when I run a grant, it will automatically uh, start a serve task, which starts a local uh, server and turns on live reload. So it means uh, live reload, uh, if you install the live reload extension to the, to the browser, then you will get uh, I can install it. So now you can see the small icon here. Uh, if I reload the app, you can see, you can't really see, but uh, there is a small dot which is empty and if, you, if I reload it, it's now full. So it means when I change something here, so you know, for example, if I change Uh, welcome to Feed Henry. Let's change welcome to Feed Henry. Cool. Now it should actually it should reload. Mm -hmm. I have cheated, but uh, it should live reload the RBL browser. I did pick it. I don't know what's live live reload is connected. I don't know what's happening. It's fine, but uh, <coughs> in practice it works. So uh, you basically that uh, you basically get the 
um, instant instant reload of the of the resources, which is pretty nice in comparison to native development. Uh, usually, in a, in a native, that's not uh, that that fast. I'm not the native developer, but uh, as a, uh, uh, could is it is it uh, faster than a native development? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. If Tadar say that uh, he's uh, he's big fan of, of native development, so if Tadar say that, then then believe him. Uh, okay. So that's a local workflow. Again, you can push online. You can build. Uh, you can build it, install it into the uh, into the um, devices. So uh, what else we could uh, we could do? is I will just show you very quickly uh, how it is easy to develop a jack and up application. I don't have time to actually deploy it. However, uh, let's create a new form and we will see, uh, you can see that there are some templates for, uh, for the, uh, for the <coughs> example applications. Uh, you can uh, use them as a base. So for example, as I told you, there are there are fl floods going on in uh, in your area, and you want to build community applications for people to handle that, so they can just shoot the image and, for example, uh, send it uh, to 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 you, and you will communicate with uh, uh, with uh, fire station, uh, fire department to to. Um, To handle that uh, incident, so let's use customer incident form. Name it like floods. Oh no! And here you can see uh, you can see the drag and drop interface. That wasn't that drag and drop. Uh, here you can basically uh, select the fields which should be in a, in a, your application. So let's say I want very very easy very easy form. So I will just remove almost everything. I don't even need first name. I don't probably need gender in that case as well. And I will add something. I will add something. <laughs> What's up? You could have just picked the blank form template. Really? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, actually. Uh, oh gosh, I think that you should have left uh, the city because the reporting. <laughs> <laughs> so they will call back you back. Right? Yeah, and uh, here you can see a label, a label field. So let's <laughs> add a picture there. That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, cool. it will determine everything else. So you could uh, you could just save it and uh, here's a preview. Uh, so you can see how the how the app will look like uh, uh, look like uh, at the end. I I want to go into into building it uh, at at uh, this point uh, because I would like to show you one other feature and it is the it is the App Store uh, Enterprise App Store which allows you to host the applications uh, for. Expo uh, exposing the, 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 the binaries of ap applications to your users. It can be employees, it can be family, it can be anyone. So, let's first, we will need the binary. So, let's go and download the build binary. So, I will go to the client app and I'll download uh, the newest version of Android binary and I will download it locally. It already downloads, and what we should do to create a app store, uh, you should go to admin, uh, mobile app management, and here you see the configuration of the app store. So let's create, for example, fridge family app store, and you can choose icon. I don't have one, so I'll just skip it. Um, okay, so we have set up App Store. 
but it is <coughs> empty. Uh, in order to double them, I will need to configure auth policy, uh, auth policies. So uh, let me just let me just create feed Henry out policy, uh, out policy, which will basically use the same authorization as the as the studio uses. So let's create a feed Henry authorization policy and go back to the mobile app management. And now, if I configure the App Store, I need also configure App Store app or start new new app, so it will be mm, my feed my feed Henry app. Let's give it uh, some version, and you can uh, you can type you can type requirements there, description, some notes which users will see. So. Uh, Uh, what's new? It's the first version. So. And uh, you can give some uh, support contacts there. So, uh, for example, my email. And select the Feed Henry Alpha policy. And you can even upload a screenshot, but I don't have one. You, you can also change change the AI icon. I don't have one again. So let's, uh, let's uh, update it. Go to the App Store again and select the application in the in the view. Again, you uh, select the the authorization policy for for uh, the App Store. And now uh, I forgot one more thing. I have to upload the binary <coughs> because if I go here, I see no application, and that's why you uh, that's because you have forgot to upload binary, or I have forgot. So uh, let's choose this APK, which I download somewhere. <coughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, version one installed. So if you go here, you will see the first application installed. You can access it, and again. Uh, users can uh, use uh, either the QR code, or they can, uh, of course, access it from the mobile mobile phone itself. You can send, or the employees, you can send the uh, the link to your app store. They will just uh, just log in and uh, use the download link to uh, to download the application to the phone. So it's not as good as Play Store or or App Store, but it's uh, pretty uh, pretty simple and neat, uh, straightforward solution for. Uh, for uh, managing the, the applications uh, for for your users. The App Store is uh, for, for you only. I mean, uh, App Store. It's, it's only your applications are here. Or yeah, it's applications a, because uh, there's only one. Uh, that's basically it's this one. Your, it's only your applications, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a it's a feed Henry application which is running on the same URL under the under the, your domain slash store and uh, it's just web application which is optimized for mobile phones uh, where you can where you can browse uh, the, the application you, you install there. But you can upload a mobile app that you built somewhere else. Yes. You can. Yeah. yeah. If you built one in Xcode, you can take the zip file from Xcode even though it's not using our platform. You yeah. could distribute it using the app sure. if you want. Uh, it just it just stores uh, binaries for different platforms, and uh, uh, it offers. I believe it offers the. Uh, it will detect the platform that you are on currently, yes. right? <coughs> and uh, so, if you browse it on your mobile phone, uh, it it recognizes that it's the uh, it's a Safari uh, from uh, from iOS. Uh, so uh, then it will uh, it will offer you to download. Uh, the binary from iOS, which I don't remember. Uh, IPA, right? IPA right. file. So APK file on Android and so on. Does it answer in your question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Is there any update mechanism for the applications, or you just need to send them a link? That yeah, yeah. You just need to tell them that uh, it was updated. You could you could probably use push notifications for mm. for that. Mm. Like, like within the application. 
to link to the website to download the new version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Users have to click, <laughs> but uh, you could use push notifications, which we have pretty neat uh, integration with that I have developed. That's why I mentioned it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, um, I would add to that that if you are using forms-based application, uh, the form is not stored within the application. So as you update the form, application yeah, updates okay. itself. Yeah. So. <coughs> uh, using push is uh, pretty simple as well, but uh, you have to go through the through several uh, steps like uh, registering uh, your Google account and. Uh, acquiring the Google Cloud messaging key and project number, which I won't do now, so uh, let's put there some test value. And here, if you enable it with uh, correct values, uh, then several things will happen. Uh, it will install, it will install the <coughs> push push target. Uh, to uh, fh-config-json, so you can see that I have enabled uh, Android push push messages here with some uh, secrets. Again, the secrets are stored here for that application. And uh, uh, in a push console, I will be able to push uh, push notification uh, like uh, please update to get new shiny stuff and send it to all users of your applications that, that have installed it. That's what I would do. Mm -hmm. Or you can, of course, you can, uh, of course, build uh, the application for uh, production, uh, deployment, and uh, send it to, to the App Store. It will be, first it will need to be um, approved by, by Apple, uh, but you can, you can, Android applications uh, can be sent to Play Store, uh, and so on. Any other questions? No? No, Jason? Do you have any other questions? Okay. Good. So uh, we have shown you how, uh, how to develop uh, the Cordova, it means web standards based applications, uh, which is probably the simplest thing which you can do if you know, I believe that everyone knows HTML, CSS, and uh, JavaScript. So uh, it's the simplest way how to build uh, build an application. Uh, if you want uh, some uh, some uh, native or bet some better native integration and, and so on, you will you will want to uh, use uh, the native uh, native Android or iOS or Windows uh, application, and uh, it will uh, you basically use the same workflows uh, as you did uh, for. Uh, for Cordova. Uh, that's probably it. So, no other questions? Are there prizes for questions? Prizes? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I have, do, do you those scarves? I have, yeah. one, I have one special prize for really good questions. All right, I'll come to the other. <laughs> <laughs> You're out, right? So yeah, that's it. Red, Red Hat, Red Hat uh, mobile platform. Uh, these statistics uh, basically. <laughs> uh, sorry, that, that's not error. Uh, it uh, it uh, uh, updates uh, every day uh, by default. Uh, you can enable real time, but uh, uh, but uh, that's not error. So thank you. Thank you.
Four sessions. Uh, so again, take, take, take yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I didn't, didn't take one of my four earlier. Yeah. yeah. And the city where we live is uh, blue. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Ireland. Yeah. Use them for. Uh, they need to know that. Yeah. 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 The, the one tonight, the middle or the Okay, yeah. I replied, I think. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 I'll look it up later. Okay, thanks. Oh, yeah, we should probably leave. Do you have a car here? No. No. So we. Tram or. Yeah, tram probably will be. It's in half an hour. Uh, very good. Okay. 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 Okay.
Is there, is there anything that you would improve on the on the talk or on the, on the workshop? I only sat in for the last yeah. half an hour, forty minutes, I think. I believe um, I should have the demo demo uh, better prepared, right? No, I, I, I don't know. I'll let the others I mean, say. From start to finish. Yeah. Um, I I usually click around, and I don't. I realize that I don't know what to say about the given. You know. <laughs> Some sections. Uh, but uh, I. I was working on uh, Rich Faces team for uh, three years, uh, before a few years. And I was, uh, we were pretty nice in an online demo. And I was working three years on that project. And I was developing that, that uh, demo and from scratch. No and I, I have seen, seen it that many times that I couldn't tell anything about it. Because it was like, you know, uh, this is the combo box. Uh, it was the UI library, by the, by the way. Uh, so this is the combo box. And I don't know what to say about combo box. It's a combo box. What should I? <laughs> so obvious. I know what it has. The, the box it has, but I don't know what. Oh, oh yeah, yeah the, the presentation. I, I forgot again. Uh, you have to leave, but I will. I will try to do it very quick. Look, are you driving or? No, no, I don't have. I will join you for a, in a tram. Okay. I will just export my presentation. Yeah, will it be by that time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jo, <laughs> Uh, dobře, takže Reddit, uh, Slides.com... Aha. No, jsem postranný kábel z HDMI, který má display pod dografáři, to stalo 7 kg. 7 kg? No. Z uh. HDMI jako display pod, takže přímo bez redukce. Jediný, co jsem opravdu rád, je, že fungoval internet. Protože kdyby nefungoval... Tady už nic není, už končíte, ne? Jo, už končíte. Ta Wi-Fi na to byla strašná, přetížená. Nefungovala, jo? Wi-Fi? Ta ta normální, ta... Jo, ta velkácká, ta byla hotová. Ale ta byla zvolená. Teď byl přímo přes ten přes Gigabit, jo? Ano, ano. To bylo ještě taky. To je, jo, prezenter. Ne, to mi jde. No něco s tím až jo, máš skutečně. Ale to netkáme, to už se nestaví. To je tvoje, ne? Jo, jo. 